The district best supports schools by challenging them to think broadly about the student experience. Um, and sometimes that looks like processes and sometimes that looks like um, challenging conversations where you're really pushing people um, to, to articulate what they believe best suits students and what circumstances best fosters learning in kids. Um, so we can, we, we can support them in lots of ways. We can provide them with resources. We can provide them with a school redesign process. One of the most important things a district has done is challenge schools to look outside of your own four walls and look outside of the walls of this district and look around the rest of the country and the rest of the world to see what's out there that is student-centered and focused on um, student agency and helping kids become better lifelong learners. So the district can support not only in terms of resources and process, but really most important, the district supports schools by challenging them philosophically uh, to re-examine the student experience and continue to, to say to them, be bold and be brave in your redesign work um, and be continuous in that effort. Um, so I think those are the most important things the district can do to support schools. I think first and foremost, we provide the support of saying, go forth and do things differently. Um, very uh, specifically and intentionally, we say, we want you to change the way school is working um, and that traditional measures may not be the best indicators of success. So we give you some cover from that. Um, so we have accountability matrices in Georgia just like other states um, and they are basically uh, measured by test scores and, and we've always been saying to our principals and our schools um, you're more than a test score so go forth and do right by kids and the test scores will come around. So that's a big deal for the district office to say we're going to give you space to be innovative um, because we know that this is a long-term play and so we're not going to change course in the short term because you might not have you know this particular test score that you need. So that's number one and that doesn't cost anything for a district. Um, secondly, um, the leadership development that we talked about is a, is a big support um, as we coach principals through change management. Um, and so they get a lot of one-on-one -on -one or um, uh, group therapy um, as well as training and support as they uh, help manage this kind of idea of transforming school because teachers are, are cautious, uh, parents are cautious, the community can sometimes be cautious about it. Um, so we provide some cover there. Um, and then we also provide money for the schools to, to plan. Um, and so we give them a planning grant um, and then we also give them implementation funds uh, for the year that they launch. So that looks somewhere around the, about $150,000 to $175,000 over the course of three to five years, um, which was money that we didn't add to our budget. Uh, it was money that we just reallocated. So where we were using that for professional learning, we're still using it for professional learning. We're just being more targeted in the way we expect it to be used. Um, and that's towards how they they do their school redesign and personalized learning. Uh, and then the last thing is really redesigning curriculum models to be able to be supportive of autonomy at schools. Um, and so that's where competency-based education becomes really important. So instead of dictating um, the scope and sequence or a pacing guide, it's more about saying these are the outcomes that we want to see. We trust schools um, to be able to find the best ways for kids to demonstrate evidence of those outcomes. Um, and if schools have particular needs, then we'll come in and give it to them. So we've really tried to change the district from uh, the one who knows everything um, to really being more of a support provider um, and saying what do our schools need and how we provide support for them instead of the other way around. The most important thing that Henry County Schools has done in this philosophical shift to personalized learning is we've invested in people. Uh, we are committed to helping um, people's thinking about school evolve from 20th century to 21st century um, and we have put most of our effort in this district into building capacity of leaders and teachers um, to help think about what student agency can look like for kids. And what that's actually meant for us as an organization is on the way to getting to student agency, we have needed to attend to um, teacher agency. So teachers having say in their own professional development, leader agency where leaders have the, the agency to make the decisions in their school building um, that are right for kids and in the direction of student agency. Um, but, but by far the most important thing that we've done uh, is vet, invest in the people in Henry County Schools and teachers and kids and leaders are the ones who are making this happen. That's the most exciting part of it all um, and it's where we've put the majority of our effort in our district. So for us this was never about a platform or a program or any particular book or anything like that. This was always about um, building the capacity of Henry County kids and adults uh, to, to rethink school for kids.